If you have ever wondered how VFX artists create crowds in movies and TV shows, then you are in for a ride. Because it is not as easy or simple as you might think it is. On the other hand, they sometimes use simple tricks that can baffle you. And once you discover them, you will never see crowds in movies the same again. Now, let me take a moment and tell you about Malcolm's Mouse Scripts for Maya. It is basically a set of very useful tools designed to enhance your workflow using Maya. These scripts offer a lot of modeling and productivity tools. For example, the mirror tools allow you to quickly mirror objects and speed symmetrical modeling. And the edge selection enables you to select any edge, vertex, or face with any offset that you want. In addition to access aligned lattice, vert snapping, and tools like deleting empty groups, fast modeling open and close, extra head elements, and much more. Speaking of extra head elements, the scripts offer a visual quick start guide that can be found directly in the Maya shelf by clicking the help shelf button. The developer also offers all these scripts and more for a huge discount if you want to grab the whole mail script mega pack, including every other script in one place which will be much better than buying them separately. And if you want to keep up to date with all these Maya scripts from this developer, you can check out his LinkedIn page where he posts a lot of new content and posts all about these updates of these tools. So if you are interested, you will find all the necessary links in the description. First of all, if you want to create crowds, you need characters. These can be fighters or soldiers in an army, like what you can see in this scene from The Lord of the Rings where you can see tens or maybe hundreds of thousands of soldiers, or to be specific, orcs, marching towards the castle of Minas Tirith, also known as the City of Kings. Or it can be a crowd of animals, just like this one from the Lion King movie, where we can see a horde of wild beasts running together in the same direction, while at the same time, each having their own unique appearance and movement to a certain extent while running through the valley. To create these characters and animals, 3D modeling artists have to manually model each one of them, not all of them of course, otherwise it's gonna be pointless. I mean each unique character or animal in the crowd is gonna be replicated multiple times to make the crowd look believable. And to achieve this task, 3D modeling artists use different software such as Max, Maya or Blender in combination with sculpting software such as ZBrush to create all these highly detailed aspects of the characters such as scars, wrinkles, clothes and other details that show realism. But crowds are useless if they are just standing still. They need to be animated. To understand how important this job is in VFX productions, you need to know that there is a job title for this type of work, and it is called Crowd Artist. These guys are responsible for creating digital crowd behaviors and simulations to achieve the look, movement, and style envisioned by the director and VFX production of the film or the TV show. They can do their job of animating and simulating those crowds using 3D software such as Houdini, Max, or Maya. But there are a bunch of other specialized 3D software that were specifically created to make crowds and their behavior. Among the software we can mention, Massive, My Army, and Gollum. These software are usually required for this type of job, because it makes the process much easier, more efficient, and most importantly, it makes it more affordable which is very important considering the incredible amount of VFX required to make a movie or a TV show. For example, Gollum was used to create battle scenes in Hercules 2014, where the soldiers were marching to fight. With Gollum, the film's VFX team was able to populate the vast landscapes of ancient Greece with armies comprising thousands of soldiers without having to animate each one individually. The software helped ensuring diverse behavior among soldiers so they didn't appear like mere duplicates. But one thing that makes a crowd of characters look like a crowd is actually its behavior. This means how each individual in the crowd moves and reacts to its surroundings and environments and the forces applied against it. Golo's behavior system allowed VFX teams in Hercules to craft varied behaviors for the soldiers and their entities. For example, infantrymen could be made to march, run, fight, or fall while cavalry units had their own unique set of animations. 
The interactions between different units, like clashes between two opposing forces, were more dynamic and realistic because of these behavior controls. Integration with other VFX elements is also something that needs to happen, where crowd simulations need to be integrated seamlessly with practical effects, in addition to other VFX elements and live action footage. For instance, in scenes where practical effects or real actors were present in the foreground, Golem simulated crowds filled the midground and background, creating a grander scale. VFX artists in general use a ton of techniques that makes creating the illusion of crowds believable, in addition to being fast and affordable at the same time. One of these techniques is variation and randomization. So, to avoid the copy-paste look, artists introduce variations in characters' appearances like clothing, size, color, and so on, in addition to their behaviors. Random seed values can ensure that not every agent behaves in precisely the same way, as you can see in this scene. This means that variation and randomization are pivotal for making simulated crowds appear realistic and believable. Without them, crowd scenes can appear artificial, as if the same individual character has been merely duplicated across the screen, which is not good. But believe it or not, sometimes VFX artists take kind of lazy shortcuts by shooting the same people in the crowd and they do it multiple times in the same shot or they duplicate the same character without changing their clothes, also in addition to their color size and so on, which is really lazy and sometimes you can spot it easily. Also, one of the most important techniques is Bold's algorithm. When creating a swarm of fish, for example, or a flock of birds, VFX artists usually rely on Boyd algorithms. Proposed by Craig Reynolds in 1986, it basically follows three basic rules which are separation, alignment, and cohesion, and these govern the movement of each Boyd, to make it look as believable as possible. But the thing is, this algorithm has been adapted for various crowd scenarios beyond just flocking. Now, going back to the iconic World Be Stampede scene, which is a prime example of Boy's algorithm in action, where young Simba is trapped in a gourd with a herd of wildebeest running down. Crowd artists face the challenge of creating the illusion of hundreds or maybe thousands of wildebeest running together, with each animal avoiding collisions with each other, while also following the general flow of the herd. Manually animating this would be a nightmare and immensely time-consuming. And to solve this problem, the view effects team at Disney used Bond's algorithm to simulate the movement of the wildebeests. The algorithm with its principles of separation, alignment, and cohesion allowed the movements of the animals to be realistic, so each digital wildebeest acted as an autonomous agent, following the boy's rules to determine its movement based on the positions and velocities of each neighbor. So, the use of Bose algorithm allowed, I think, for the creation of a thrilling and realistic stampede sequence without having to animate each one individually. And this sequence became one of the most memorable parts of the film and showcased the potential for combining traditional animation with computer-generated effects. Also, to make crowds look believable, especially human crowds, VFX artists can use motion capture. So, in craft simulations, the diversity and complexity of human behaviors become amplified. Each individual has a unique way of moving, in addition to reacting and interacting with their surroundings. So, by employing motion capture data, artists can capture a wide variety of these behaviors. But it is not just about capturing different activities. It's also about the quality of those movements. When an animator tries to replicate human movement manually, there is always a risk of looking too mechanical or lacking the fluidity seen in real life. This can be very important if there is a close-up crowd simulation of fully digital CGI crowds, like what we can see in this shot from World War Z. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.